Hi everyone, this is a demo of Amazon Glacier uh, file archive script um, written on Laravel framework uh, with the latest version and this will be a live demo to see all the features and uh, uh, options that you have uh, within this script. Now the script is fully powered by Amazon Glacier service which is a, a long-term file archive solution. Uh, you can learn more by visiting Amazon website, AWS website, um, and just type in Amazon S3 Glacier. Uh, you'll get to see uh, uh, the definition of the service, uh, the benefits, and the associated cost. Uh, pretty much they have full details on the Amazon Glacier part. Now, the, as you can see, you have, you'll, upon, upon getting this script, uh, by the way, the source code of the script is available in Code Canyon. You can get it there. Links are in the description. Now, link for the live demo is in the description as well. So you can log in uh, yourself with ad demo admin credentials or use um, or create your own and just play around to see if you like the script or not. Um, so you, you get the nice front-end interface fully built um, with Laravel framework, uh, basically a blade view files um, and um, Let's get into the actual login page and see what we have on the back end. So upon logging in, first thing you'll see if you're logging in as an admin, you'll see admin dashboard, which will showcase the overall um, consumption of the, um, the file storage and then the, what kind of files the types were uploaded and the number of users, etc. Basically, standard um, admin panel information, which would be useful for you to see overall uh, picture of your current um, environment. Um, now, when the user logs in, um, so obviously the admin panel part will be so, um, shown for the admins. The user panel will be shown only for users. They also have their own dashboard in terms of um, the how much uh, storage is being already used, the total size of the storage, what kind of file types they're uploading, and, the, uh, and then also this part that I'll be explaining a bit in detail because in Glacier it is um, the way it works. Um, you can upload unlimited files as you want, but the download pro process is um, not instantaneous unless if you uh, select this option of instant download. The download part is you have to request it. So the cost of the Glacier is way cheaper comparing to Amazon S3 standard, uh, which is also one of the storage types provided by an Amazon S3 service. Um, but um, in the Glacier part, since the cost is super, slow, uh, super low, uh, you will need to request uh, the files to be able to download them and I'll show you in the demo. Um, and the here script also shows how many files are con currently uh, ready to download, um, the, how many of them are, uh, are in the process of retrieving and so forth. The, they'll, they'll, whatever they requested for download will be available for the duration um, that's specified in the settings and I'll show as well. Um, so when you request a file to download, it will be available for whatever the days you set. Uh, if you set it for seven days, files are available for downloading for seven days afterwards. It will not be available to download for for instant download. So without further ado, let's show me. Let me show you the big, the main uploading part. Um, so that's where you upload your files, um, and you have three options to upload files. So you can upload directly to Glacier tier. The, you can upload as a Glacier Instant Recovery. So Instant Recovery is the one which allows you to uh, have an instantaneous access. But the price between Glacier and Glacier Instant Recovery is obviously different. Uh, you can learn more on, by visiting Amazon S3 website. The link for the pricing is also in Code Canyon uh, description for the, um, for the script. Um, you can get the pricing link directly there. And also you have access to Glacier Deep Archive. Uh, now, Deep Archive is it's way even more cheaper comparing to Glacier. Uh, so the price, for example, for Deep Archive is one dollar per uh, one terabyte of storage space. Uh, so that's that cheap. Um, so let me upload a couple files here. Just whatever it is. And by the way, all the uploads to Amazon Glacier are built with um, a native multi-part upload feature. Uh, which means when you're uploading large files, uh, they are split into multiple chunks and you can define this chunk size and all of those files are uploaded in parallel. 
So that's and uh, that's basically to speed up the process. And what's important is all the uploads are directly from your browser or user's browser um, directly to your uh, S3 bucket. So there is no uh, pre-uploading to your uh, server where you'll be hosting the script. It's a direct connection. And all the upload, all the downloads as well will be downloaded directly from the um, um, from your S3 bucket. So next I'm uploading a file for instant recovery. Now this is our demo just to show, just to show you um, how this is actually going to work. Uh, so let me select Glacier. And you can obviously set the number of maximum file size and then the uh, maximum number of um, the files that you can upload in parallel uh, in the settings, in the admin settings, and I'll show in a second. So as you can see, all three files are uploaded. And uh, here are the status that you need to see. So downloadable means I can download this one, for example, instantly. All you have to do is click and it just shows, asks you to make sure that you have the green check mark. And when I click download, I'll get the download. But if I go, for example, down, try to download Glacier here, it will show me, it will let me know that my download is not ready, so I'll need to request it. Now here you, you can see the files and the, how they were uploaded with Glacier types, etc. Um, and don't worry, like if you are uploading files with same name on the uh, on the cloud, basically uh, all of those will be separate, so they will not be re uh, rewriting in, uh, uh, each of them. They will have this special market up front, which basically uh, will distinguish them from one another. Um, so how do we request a file? So let's go ahead and request Glacier. So here you can see request archive and you have three types of request option. Expedited, expedited, uh, which allows, which basically prepares the file in one or two minutes. Uh, standard, which is up around three to five hours. And then bulk, uh, which typically half a day, basically. The only cheap, uh, only free one here is a bulk retrieval. Now the standard and expedited, expedited um, uh, archive retrieval tiers, they do have some cost per gigabyte, uh, which is again, fraction of a cent, but still um, just you need to be aware. The bulk retrieval is free of charge. I can actually go ahead just for the uh, demo, demo sake, just request one. And on the back end, yeah. So the retrieval request submitted successfully, and you can see now it's been process, uh, processing, and when it will be ready, you'll see that um, the Glacier part will be downloadable as well. The, on the other hand, Deep Archive does not support expedited retrieval. It only supports um, standard and bulk retrieval. Uh, but here, if, you, if for example, if I select expedited and request, it will not allow me. So it, the Deep Archive does not support expedited, so I can only select standard or bulk retrieval. Um, you can also lock archive. Now here, what's a lock archive means? It means I can set a number of days I want to lock this archive. By locking this archive for X amount of days, this particular file archive will not be able to, uh, no one will be able to delete. Doesn't matter if you're a user, if you're admin, uh, you cannot delete it. Um, and you can do it for pretty much each, each file here. Um, afterwards, you can also see all your archives uh, that you uploaded here. Um, then you can have access to your profile to see uh, how you've been using it on a monthly basis. So here, for example, the upload is so low, it's not even visible, uh, visible yet. Um, and some additional useful information in terms of the total files the downloadable files, and so on and so forth. Now, on the admin side, let me show you some important parts. One of them is the uh, diving deep into the how the storage looks like in terms of... And don't forget, all of these data are actually um, what you have in your um, S3 bucket for that's being uh, registered with this particular uh, script. And you set your S3 bucket and AWS settings in the archive settings under archive management. Um, so you can set whatever the storage option you want to, you want available for your uh, users. 
now so for example if you want um, available only store um, glacier storage perfect you can set um, instance recover uh, glacier instance recovery you can do it as well anything you prefer and then you can also set the default of the selected um, storage type when in the upload in here in the upload archive um, the max storage file size i mean the max archive file size the how many files can be uploaded archives can be uploaded in parallel um, if you want to enable or disable server-side encryption, um, the, uh, this is, by the way, default retrieval um, days for your archives. When you set that retrieval, you can put it here. The object lock is, again, the feature that allows you to lock the object from deleting or not. And there are two types, governance and compliance. Now, um, compliance is the ones which uh, basically you cannot delete at all. Uh, like, for example, if you set a governance, you can still delete it um, through your ADA uh, management console um, and as if you as a root administrator you can delete it but if you set compliance uh, comp if you check compliance mode doesn't matter if you are a root ac administrator or or the user who has root access basically for your AWS console you will not be able to delete it un until the days are expired for the object log mode so be careful with this the then again, this is for the, uh, the, different, the different upload size and quantity for the admin group and user groups. Uh, you can set it as you prefer. Uh, let's say for admins, you can give more access uh, in terms of the uh, more, uh, more uh, features in terms of, of uh, number of uploaded files. For users, you can set, I don't know, one at a time, whatever you prefer. Here you can set the S3 bucket name, uh, the region, and obviously your IAM uh, access keys, uh, but make sure that you have S3 policies um, added. Um, that's basically, again, those information are in the documentation, uh, which is provided with the script, so you can get it there. The rest are pretty much straightforward in terms of um, checking what kind of um, users you have, uh, where they're from, um, when they've been registered, etc. cetera. Um, Users can also create support requests uh, here. For example, if they're experiencing an issue, um, you can they can request uh, basically um, help from the administrator. Also, one important thing that to mention, if for example um, the default size for users is not enough, again and uh, again by the way, this size is set on the um, archive management and archive settings. You can set the default size for the new users. Now, what if I want to increase it? Not a problem. You can click on the um, view user details and increase storage size. Uh, so you can manually increase storage size to, uh, well, the, this particular demo will not allow me since the, um, all of, for, for the script protection, it's limited in terms of what changes can you make except the upload part, uh, but yeah, you get the idea, you can change it here. And the rest are pretty much straightforward. You can set the global settings in terms of the file um, CEO, uh, the, the names like the URL, website name, um, enable or disable, um, various things include the, include the uh, Google Maps um, keys, etc. You can also set uh, logging in via social media like um, Facebook, Twitter, Google, and LinkedIn. Um, you can also enable disable email verification for new users. Uh, let's say if you want to make sure that only uh, verified emails can be registered, you can just turn it on. Uh, you can also disable new user reg registration so nobody can um, yeah, no, nobody can register from outside. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you cannot create your own users. You still can. All you have to do is go to the user list and just create your own user. Uh, it's that simple. Um, same goes for the front end. You can still change CEO and logos. You can create blocks here, FAQs, reviews, and then um, set the terms and conditions um, all, all in one place. Um, so that's pretty much in a nutshell. Uh, also, the, um, the, with script, you have the, the Spanish translation, uh, but you can easily translate yourself to um, then translate the script to any other files, uh, to any other languages, sorry. Um, and it's a matter of translating one JSON file and that's it. Um, if, um, let me see if I forgot something. Uh, that's pretty much it. In terms of the, the archives, on the backend, 
the um, how how the um, retrieval process and making sure that the file is expired or not is all done by actual cron task um, so when you when you install the script uh, by the way script can be installed on any hosting shared hosting private hosting whatever you prefer um, just make sure that it supports PHP version 8 which definitely every hosting does and the MySQL um, five, at least 5.7 uh, and here, as you can see, the one which I requested uh, at the beginning of the demo is already downloadable. So I can just go ahead and click download. Um, the, it's all processed back and on with a cron task. So we'll make sure to set up the cron task correctly. Um, the lower the frequency is the definitely better. So you can set it for one minute interval. I, I doubt that there are cron, cron hostings which allow uh, one second interval, but yeah, the, the man, minimum you can set is one minute, uh, one minute if I remember correctly in Linux environment, so that sh still should be the case. Um, and that's it. You can you have full visual in terms of the file details, the metadata, when it was uploaded, well archived, and if it's locked or not, if it is, until when. Um, so those are also important. Um, so as I said, you have the, the the link for the source code in the description, link for the demo in the description as well, uh, among uh, with additional information. There's also a SaaS version of Amazon Glacier called uh, Cloud Archive, so definitely check it out. And if you like the script, uh, definitely subscribe and follow us. Uh, there'll be more uh, demo uh, of our other scripts and which will be pu published in a regular basis. Thanks, if you have any questions, leave us a comment. Have a nice day.